Okay, we are live. This is happening. <laughs> yes, we have been having a, a few technical, pardon me, difficulties earlier, but we're up and running. Marilyn Smith, Carmen Chang, how how are you two doing? Good. I'm, I'm great. I'm great. I think I think you should call it a technical fart because I am the queen of fibers. So. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> Oh, but it's it's fun to do this. I'm really excited about this format. You know, I think last week we had a couple technical issues as well, but you know, it's to be expected with this kind of format. And it's it's a lot of fun though, because I feel like I'm really exploring the advantages of being able to use live stream in different ways. Um, I know with you, Marilyn, you actually do a live stream show every week, every Wednesday night. And do you want to just tell me a bit about your experience with live streams and the hiccups? Well, you know, we do it on Facebook Live and my husband tapes it. And it's like this very um, intimate feeling that, you know, you come into my kitchen and uh, last night was a complete disaster. I didn't have all the ingredients that I really needed for the cake. And so it's right. real. Like it's a really real show. And I think that's what people connect to. So this is all like, don't worry about it. People love the the authenticity of what we're trying to do. So, yes. Just we're we're, get, we're hanging in there. Absolutely. If, if anything, that's the beauty we, we of are live. Sorry. I think that's the beauty of live, so people can see all the technical farts and all the kitchen farts, and hopefully not real farts. Yes. <laughs> well, that, this is this is not a scratch and sniff, so who knows who knows what it smells like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, so, you know, it's been a week since we talked. So how how are you guys doing in terms of uh, social distancing and just isolating at home? Like, what's it, what's it been like for you two? Carmen? I feel like social distancing is maybe the wrong word for what's happening in my life. I feel like there's a lot of physical distancing going on. We obviously are staying away from a lot of our friends, but it seems like a lot of my friends want to do video chats and there's all these new apps coming out now, like house party I'm getting invites to, and I do video chats all day long at work. So there's no lack of um, socialization in our household, <laughs> but there's a lot of physical distancing, which I think is very important. Well, and for someone- Lots of takeout. And for someone like, yeah, you, you do a ton of takeout. You're, you're always an avid supporter of, of local restaurants, which is amazing. But for you, what's it like to not be able to go to a restaurant? Because, you know, uh, you and I both would be out three or four times a week, if, if not more than that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because um, the restaurant industry is, is one that I feel very connected to. I feel for the folks that are going through what's happening right now in COVID. And so we're actually like eating out more than usual normally right. i would say we eat out like three four times a week right. but this last week i've gotten takeout at least once a day hmm. um a couple times a day on a couple occasions just to make sure that you know we're supporting our favorites and we have a lot of favorites but we want to make sure that those folks you know remain and they survive after mm -hmm. all of this right um i will say it is different like even seeing some of the restaurants and servers that um and restaurateurs that we know and we want to give them a big hug but there's a physical distancing and i think some restaurants are are doing really well at that so like slotting time slots so mm -hmm. that you don't have to go into a crowded restaurant having your, you know your takeout bag in the front so you're not actually even making contact with the with the server or with the chef mm -hmm. Um, I'm seeing leaner operations. Yeah. So I, I think that's wonderful that you can do sure. takeout. My, my son, is uh, he's actually turning 30 on Friday, and they do a lot of takeout too. Uh, and I'm really proud mm -hmm. of him for supporting all his local little restaurants. But for me as a home cook, um, I found out that there's uh, groceries that I'm ordering online that they don't have anymore. And I want to know what you're having a problem with in your cities. Uh, here in Toronto, there's like flour and yeast basically yes. are invisible. Yes. Uh, what about what's going on? I think people are trying to make bread, which is an art form. So bless you for going to try. Please don't Good ruin it. That. So you're wasting that wonderful ingredient. But what, what are you guys finding that's uh, hard to get in your cities? I, I'm always yeah. shocked that you can't find dry beans and dry lentils. I feel like when I'm at the grocery store, though, those shelves are completely empty. And I, you know, I, I like being well stocked on those things. They're very useful at home. But it just it's just something that I now, now I, if I want to make a lentil soup, I go to my local grocer and there likely is no dry lentils or canned lentils, actually. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I actually have them, but I, I didn't go and buy any more because I had some. So now I'm wishing I oh, they're gone. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Too bad. You missed out. Yeah. And Carmen? I've been surprised at not being able to find spam, like the canned meat. 
So I grew up eating spam. Wow. We almost always have a can of spam in our household. My partner is the same way. And every time I talked about eating spam, like I get made fun of. But yet the last few times I've gone to the grocery store, the spam aisle is like completely empty. It doesn't People matter. People crazy. Store. People I think we found them at Shoppers. And we found them at Walmart. But um, like where are all the spam lovers coming from? That's what I want to know. But no, it's a protein. So people are being smart in, in getting protein. But uh, yeah. I, I'm sad that people are hoarding things. You know, I, I wish that we would all go, you know, there's enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. If we didn't buy 30, like, what are you doing that for? So uh, I, I'm hoping that, you know, as Canadians, we're, when we're shopping that we maybe I buy two of something, uh, because I'm shopping for two weeks. So uh and I, I'm getting it from uh, from PC Express this week. So uh, we're going to drive up at 4 o'clock, phone them. They come it and put it in my trunk. So I'm looking forward to that experience. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, sure. This is perhaps not hoarding, but I am very well stocked now on a variety of alcohol. Uh, I think that we will... <laughs> We will talk a bit later in the show with Britt Hart about some Canadian wines and interesting ways that you can get them delivered. But what what do you like to drink during your you know self imposed quarantines? Because I I find my happy hour is starting earlier and earlier now, which <laughs> you know I think I think it just it just has to sort of be done because we're getting bored at home. But what what is your happy hour drink of choice? Okay. Um, yesterday I posted on my Instagram, it was my dad's anniversary of his death. My right. dad died on April Fool's yep. Day. He was a hilarious man. Mm -hmm. I know he planned it. And I was trying to think of what my dad would say right now. And, and I knew that he would say, you know, like, wash your hands, stay home, be kind. But he always said, don't drink cheap booze. So, and he lived to be 94. So anyway, I went down into my pantry and I, I bought this. This is a 75 year old anniversary of Crown. Oh, wow. Um, and Which is, so, do you know it's made in Gimli, Manitoba? Open. Do we know that? I know it's Canadian. Yes. And so this was amazing. And I, I toasted it to my dad in a teacup because I drink out of those. But here's to my dad right now. <laughs> no, I'm going to go get a glass. <laughs> I don't want to give germs on the bottle. I'll be oh, back. I love it. What about you? <laughs> I love Marilyn. What about you, Carmen? What do you what do you drink at home? So I usually drink bourbon. I usually drink um, spirit cocktails, and I have infused them. You can actually see it behind me that uh, I'm waiting for it to get to that right infusion. But this week I've been drinking um, Secret Barrels white rum mm -hmm. with ginger beer and just a squeeze of lime and some mint leaves. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I am I am partial to a dirty gin martini, so I've been making a few of those at home. They're quite easy to make. Uh, they're a little stiff, so I feel like one one will do you for the day. But uh, again, we're going to talk a little bit later in the show about Canadian wines. And I think I've been drinking a lot of those too, because there are so many liquor stores still open, especially in a place like Alberta. We are lucky to have a lot of boutique liquor stores as well. So you can go in there and really, really find some interesting stuff. So we'll talk a bit more about that in a little bit. Um, I just think it's important to talk today really quickly about uh, really timely news piece that's kind of making making the, the waves through Canada right now. And that's the passing of Nathan Fong in Vancouver, who was a, a food media personality, a chef, radio host, a kind of a, a jack of all trades and a, a really lovely man. So how did you guys feel when you heard that news? Well, I was uh, I met Nathan 20 some odd years ago when I first started doing TV and I flew out to Vancouver to do some and he was my food stylist and uh, funny, genuinely warm, wonderful man. And uh, I, w I was stunned. So, you know, here's here's to Nathan, too, because, yeah, I, I, I was stunned. Yeah. I'm totally stunned. That's all I got. Such such a, a lovely, lovely man. And, you know, obviously our paths cross quite quite often. I'm in Vancouver a lot for work and and he's fantastic. You you can't see Marilyn and Carmen. You can't see what I'm putting on the screen here, but I just have a couple shots of of Nathan and this oh, good. amazing one. He actually he actually met Julia Child in the 90s, I believe. So. What what an amazing opportunity even to, to meet that woman, truly a food legend. And I, I feel like Nathan himself also uh, quite the legend. So he's, he's missed by many for sure. Yeah, he was such a heavy hitter, yeah. you know, in the food scene and such an ambassador yeah. and champion of what, especially in Vancouver, but across our country, Absolutely. what people were doing in the food scene is the big loss for this industry. Absolutely. This this last shot here is him serving food with Chef Tojo too. Uh, cool. Uh, the duck, the Duke, uh, God, I can't not talk today. Duke and Duchess, uh, you know, so that was pretty amazing in Kelowna there. Anyway, it's, it's, uh, oh, it's been a sad sweet. week for, I didn't know how old he was. How old was he? 
He was 59, I believe. Oh. And we're going to talk a little bit shortly here with Chef Alessandro Vianello, and he can share some thoughts too. But it's just, it's really a really unfortunate situation, and a lot of people, specifically in Vancouver, are hit very hard. So I just wanted to acknowledge him and say that, uh, that uh -huh. he's missed and he will always be remembered. And okay. moving on from that, it's, I don't know. Take a moment, a little tough, but it's a horrible segue. But anyway, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's yeah a he had a great sense of humor, so you know what? He'd be thrilled that we're even saying anything about him. So, yeah, here's to Nathan, and uh, yeah, yeah, and Marilyn, you can cheers to Nathan on my behalf. <laughs> I do. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be so hammered by the end we, of this show. I'm gonna we, do it for you and for Dan and for. Alessandra, cheers to Nathan. Here we cheers go. Okay. Right. So I think what we're going to do is bring on our first guest here. I just mentioned him. His name is Chef Alessandro Vianello. He is the executive chef of the Kitchen Table Restaurants Group in Vancouver. So that's the restaurant group that works with uh, a lot of different properties across Vancouver, including Ask for Luigi, uh, Poor House, and De Beppe. Uh, uh, all amazing spots. So let's bring him on camera here to say hello. Uh -huh. Hello, Alessandro. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Hello, Thanks chef. for being on the show today. Great. Yeah, Hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Marilyn, that is a perfect Italian accent. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> um, all right, Chef, do you want to just give us a personal view of what's happening in Vancouver right now from your standpoint as an executive chef? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty difficult, obviously, being in the restaurant industry. I mean, well, any industry, to be honest. But um, obviously, right now... Uh, you know, being limited to only doing takeout at uh, four of our restaurants, we have five total. Um, it's been it's been pretty pretty difficult to obviously having to lay off staff and mm -hmm. and things like that. It's been pretty hard personally, um, but I mean, it's nice to see that the restaurants are doing pretty well, and there's a lot of people that are coming out to support because they miss their favorite foods. And mm -hmm. you know, I think pizza and pasta are pretty good takeout options, so they yeah. travel really well. Sounds good. To yeah. <laughs> but, but it's also very comforting. You know, I think the, the, what you're making and what we're going to make later is is what people want. I mean, they want comfort. They want kind of love and a hug and a dish. So, I mean, right. if you're doing that, that's that's a wonderful gift that you're giving to all of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chef, are you doing takeout and delivery right now? Uh, we're doing delivery through Uber Eats and uh, a couple of the, of the delivery partners. Uh, but mostly uh, we have online ordering set up so you can call. Um, and just, I think like Marilyn was saying before, uh, or actually it was Carmen, sorry, the, uh, um, you know, we have portions of the restaurant that are sectioned off so people can come in and we limit the amount of people that are in the restaurant and we can put the food. So there's, there's minimal interaction with, with, um, like the guest has minimal interaction with people that are working at the restaurant, but also from a safety standpoint for our staff, having minimal interaction with guests that are coming in the restaurant. So. Um, it's been going pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. we actually have the benefit of a couple of the restaurants now with the weather getting nice in Vancouver as well. Um, at a couple of the restaurants, we actually have windows that open up straight onto the street. So we have the ability to serve through the window. That's great. Uh, as opposed to having people come in the restaurant. That's yeah. great. That's really, really great. Distancing. So, yeah. so I have to tell you, my family's from Vancouver and Ask for Luigi is one of our favorites. I've even brought my grandmother to Ask for Luigi for brunch. So knowing that you do delivery, I might be able to send her a yeah, meal now uh, <laughs> since she's like, distanced herself, obviously, from a lot of us. Right. Um, but I was wondering what your role as an executive chef entails for the group compared to like the chefs at each of the individual restaurants. Yeah, so I have uh, a chef de cuisine at each restaurant that takes care of the day-to-day -day operations. Um, most of my responsibilities include um, things on the corporate purchasing side, uh, as well as kind of big picture menu development for the whole group, uh, working on new concepts, um, staff morale and training. Um, I really, I'm really passionate about uh, teaching young cooks um, everything that I have to learn as well. So putting in training programs and things where we do butchery classes or uh, charcuterie classes or fresh pasta courses, things like that to be able to uh, train our staff and, and keep them motivated and engaged as well. And how, how is the morale of, of your of your staff? I mean, right now it's, it's, it's difficult, obviously. I don't get to see them as much because a lot of them are, are at home. Um, but with the new government subsidy um, allowing us to bring back some more staff and, and with the restaurants becoming... Uh, busier every day um, because people are noticing that we're doing takeout. So uh, hopefully I'll get to see them a little bit more. And I mean, I try and try and touch base with a lot of them over text or phone uh, as much as I can, but it's, uh, 
it's not as easy sometimes. I think one you're thing that like you're kind of like your dad, you know, you're you're like kind of being the father figure that you're going to keep the family together. So uh, yeah, we really look at kitchen table. We really do look at ourselves and and try to act more like a family than than just a business. I mean, it is there's all a lot of stories that go into all our restaurants and there's there's purpose uh, for everything that we do. And I think that family is a really great word to describe our our team and and mm-hmm. you know we really do act like a family i mean we're we're doing a meal program for all of our team that's been laid off uh so it's it's amazing the restaurant fantastic so uh it's it's been the 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 emails and the texts have been really really nice to see and it's it's great to just even be able to supply something that one less thing that they have to worry about so no that's That's wonderful wonderful. i think i think you're you're working very hard still when when there's not much happening with your restaurant i feel like that's amazing especially with the the staff meals and helping out those service staff when these times are are really tough they're tough for everyone but i feel i really feel for the people in the restaurant industry so i think it's amazing that you're doing that but i think for now we'll let you go get ready in the kitchen because we're going to be making some meatballs with marilyn in a bit right yay all right thanks so much all right see you a bit chef Okay, bye. Oh, magic. This is working better today. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> uh, I, I love Alessandro. Such an amazing guy. And I can't wait to see what he's going to cook with you in the kitchen. I feel like you two will have a little bit of fun for sure. I'm sure we will. I, I kind of um, uh, stalked him in a really nice way. So I was looking on all his social pages. Mm-hmm. And he has, seriously, the sexiest, most wonderful videos. So if you want to check him out, I mean, honestly, <laughs> you'll fall in love with him and his food. But you can see that he's passionate about his food. And I want to eat somebody's food who's passionate, you know, oh, like, and like, I'm dying to see I'm dying to see his meatball recipe. I think Marilyn has a crush. And maybe we'll have some wine with that. <laughs> <laughs> Wine, whiskey. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't make drinks. I'm gonna go straight up this. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm loaded already. Okay, I'm such a lightweight. Like I am so loaded already. It's like sad. Like all of that oh. is fruit. So whatever. Anyway. <laughs> well, well. So speaking speaking of alcohol, I think it's time to bring on our next guest. Her name is Britt Hart, and so Britt Hart is a Calgary-based sommelier. Uh, she's a Canadian wine expert. She does a lot of wine articles for us at, at Eat North, and she has just a really good perspective on the the wine industry as a whole and today she's going to talk a little bit about a few different wineries the delivery options they're offering and obviously as well how COVID-19 is affecting the the wine the wineries across Canada so I'm going to bring Britt on here and Carmen's going to do that chat so there we go hello mm-hmm. Britt hi Britt how are you hi I'm good how are you great Carmen let you take it from here yeah, so Britt, I feel like we know each other very in depth just because I've been following you on social media for quite some time and reading your articles on Eat North. And I don't think that we've actually ever met in person yet. So just virtually. Hello. I know, right? It's, I was thinking the same thing. I uh, I was talking to my husband about that the other day. I swear I have, but you're absolutely right. I think it's just, that's the beauty of social media, right? Absolutely. And I know that you're doing a lot in terms of advocating for wines and Canadian wines right now. And we just had that conversation with Chef about um, how the restaurant industry has been affected. But the wine industry has as well, because they also are a big supplier for restaurants. So what are some of the best ways that a consumer could support the wine industry right now? Well, um, I mean, that's a a great question. And wineries are, um, yeah, they're, they're absolutely affected as well right now. From what I've been getting and talking to different winemakers is most of them haven't had to do layoffs which is great but they've kind of changed up how they're um, using people so instead of people that um, they have on their sales teams that would be going out and visiting restaurants instead they're now in the vineyards um, doing some grooming or they're uh, packing boxes because delivery which is something that has I mean most of these wineries are already doing um, has taken off because People are trying to mm-hmm. get as much wine into their homes as possible right now. Um, but yeah, I think the yeah. best way to get out and really support these wineries is to continue to support, just as we were doing with um, getting out and supporting restaurants. But if a local restaurant's selling wine still, go and buy wine from there first and then go to the wineries. So That's a good point. And I know last week we were talking a lot about like, wine shops that are now doing delivery programs. Um, have you seen that at all? Have you heard about some of those programs yeah so i mean um being in calgary we've got so many great independent shops and there's so many that are doing really innovative things so vine arts is 
um, huge in the city. They're always doing cool stuff. Jesse's one of the best. Um, but they've got these wine survival packs that they're doing. J Webb's a great shop and they're doing free delivery within the city of Calgary. Bricks Wine Company has been doing a bunch of fun sort of little pop-up things and they're doing curbside uh, contactless delivery. So in Alberta, we're so lucky that we have all of these wine shops. Um, and again, um, being able to support these wine shops really helps the wineries as well. It gives these wineries a little bit more exposure. Um, so, I mean, most people probably hadn't heard of let's say Blue Mountain, for example, um, and they only found out about it by going into a restaurant or seeing it on the shelf at their favorite shop. So we need to make sure that those outlets are still available for consumers. So yeah. Buy wine from shops and everywhere. For sure. Um, when this COVID situation all happened and I started to see wine shops doing delivery, I know a few of my friends were like out there making big orders. Certainly they like stock their shelves. <laughs> Are there tips around storing life properly or is there shelf life on wine? Um, there's definitely shelf life on wine. Um, with rosé, for example, you don't want, I mean, we're getting into 2019 rosés right now. Um, you really don't want to drink a rosé that's more than a couple of years old. Um, reason being is sort of the fruit starts to fall off. That's the beautiful thing about rosé is it's juicy, it's fruity. You drink it because it tastes like pink grapefruit or watermelon or whatever it is. Um, and after a couple of years, those fruit notes fall apart. So um, rosé really doesn't have much of a shelf life. Um, if you're drinking bigger reds like Sangiovese or big Italian reds or Bordeaux and um, like Cabernet blends, um, Absolutely, those can be stored, but you want to make sure that you're storing things in a consistent temperature and in a cool, dark place. So um, okay. like my wine cellars under my stairs, it's away from my furnace. It's away from anything that could potentially heat the wines up. Um, mm -hmm. Some people will get really into it if they don't have a proper wine storage place and they'll put like a damp towel under the stairs to help keep the corks moist. But um, I think that's a little excessive personally. But yeah. Um, Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's good to know. And I was reading your piece on Eat North about pairing snacks with wine, and you paired like cheesies with a rosé, as you're saying. I think is a rosé. Um, yeah. But what goes into pairing foods and, and snacks or foods and wines for you? What do you consider? Um, oh God, I think um, like just drinking wine. The first thing I consider whenever I open up a bottle of wine is what I might be eating with it. Um, so really, like if you're eating. Like we're having lamb for dinner tonight. So if you're going to be eating something like lamb, you want to go with a bigger red. So go with like a Syrah from the Okanagan or something like that. Mm. Um, if you're having like curry, curry is kind of what we're eating constantly at our house. Because I feel like you can open your pantry and dump a bunch of stuff into a pot and you cross your yeah. fingers. Um, but go with like an off dry Riesling. Anytime you're having something with a bit of spice, you want to mitigate that spice by adding some sweetness, um, which is mm. kind of like, if you think of hot wings, like you have like sweet and sweet and spicy hot wings, things like that. Um, yeah, you really just want to make sure that you've got some city that's cutting that, a little bit of sweetness that cuts your heat. Um, and I say sparkling wine is always a great palate cleanser. So if you're ever unsure of what you're going to be having, just open up a bottle of bubbles and you'll be fine. <laughs> That's good to know. I love bubbles. <laughs> so I'm working from home. I'm not actually drinking right now until tonight. But what are, what are you drinking? What do you have on the table? Oh, gosh. Um, so I picked four wineries that I found have been doing really incredible things, um, whether it's supporting small industries um, or doing just great things in general. Um, my line has a special place in my heart to me. So they're from Niagara. My father-in-law actually got married at the winery. Um, but they make beautiful wines. So I've got their unoaked Chardonnay on the table. Um, mm. They're really, really advocating for small uh, restaurants and independent businesses within the Niagara region. So if you keep an eye on any of these wineries that I'm going to be talking about Instagram feed, they all have lists of other restaurants that they're encouraging uh, consumers to go out and taste and try and support. Um, but yeah, so Vineland does incredible stuff, really low intervention, um, family-run winery, and they're widely available all across the country. Um, but you can get free delivery with them using Spring 2020 right now. Oh, cool. um, yeah, which is really great. So all of these wineries are offering free delivery. Um, Sandhill is another fantastic winery. Um, they, this is the first rosé of the season that I'm going to get to try. So I'm going to pour myself a glass of this when I'm done my interview and enjoy walking with you. 
um, their 2019 rosé is out right now, and they have um, they have a little urban winery in downtown Kelowna. Um, so all of their wines are great, authentic as well. Um, Blue Mountain has to be, I think, my absolute favorite Canadian winery, and they're doing free delivery. And they also have a list of restaurants that you can go and support. Um, they've also recently just paired with Cactus Club, so I know Cactus Club's doing curbside delivery. And uh, their sparklings on the list and is one of their uh, takeaway wine options. So um, get out there and support restaurants wherever you can and, and shop their wine list. Um, and then Benjamin Bridge is just incredible. So uh, they're in Gaspro Valley in Nova Scotia. And right now, anytime you buy a bottle of Nova 7, which I found out yesterday is the number one selling wine in all of Nova Scotia, um, this weird pet nut, off dry sparkling wine is the, the best selling wine, which is really cool. Um, but they're giving away 10% of all of their sales to uh, three hospital foundations within Nova Scotia to support frontline workers. Awesome. So, yeah, it's a really good way to um, get out and support and help and yeah, support these small businesses as well. So, I'm going to take notes and make sure I check out some of those wines. And you cut out there for a little, uh, a little bit from me. So, did you say people can follow you on Instagram for this information? Or you um, so you, if you go to any of these wineries' websites um, or go onto their Instagram feeds, okay. they're like cool. um, yeah. I mean, I can Perfect. always do a little thing on my feed too, but um, yeah, they've all got a list of restaurants that are um, like great for you to go out and support that they work really closely oh. with. You want to keep awesome. those restaurants so they can continue to carry these ones. Yeah, so check out the more information from each of these wineries and find out some more information about those discounts and promotions that you were talking about. But thanks for spending time with us and hanging out with us this morning. Um, also check out a great article on Eat North because cheesies and potato chips paired with wine is awesome. Something you want to do when you're watching Netflix at home. <laughs> thanks, Britt. Yeah, thanks so much. That was great. I, what I one thing that I really, really love about Brit Hart is that she makes wine approachable. I feel like sometimes some people are trying to explain wine varietals to you, or you know, the tasty notes and whatnot. You can feel it can feel a little stuffy, and she definitely does doesn't do that. Well, she wrote an article about pairing wine with cheesies, so she definitely is is very approachable. But uh, no, that was that was a great interview. I I love Brit. And, and wine can come great. across as snobby, yeah. and she makes it so casual and fun. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, and my takeaway, Dan, was that I better go down and find that bottle of rosé I was saving, so I better drink it tonight. So right. thank you so much for my wine pairing for the evening. I, I feel like the theme of today's today? episode is pressuring Marilyn to drink everything in her house. Everything. She's going to drink everything. <laughs> well, maybe we'll take a break from booze and go into the kitchen, because I think that Chef Alessandro, who we were chatting with a little bit earlier, he's ready to make some meatballs with Marilyn Smith. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Oh, if I can get this right. Okay, Alessandro, I'm in your kitchen and I'm so excited. What are you gonna make? What are you gonna make me vicariously? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna be making our uh, our Dubepi meatballs for you this evening, this afternoon, sorry. You know what? I love, I lo like that to me is comfort food. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Oh, okay, go. Favorites. Make me comfort food. And, I, you know, I think I'm partly Italian, so uh, even though I'm not, but in my soul I am. So is this like an Italian authentic meatball? Uh, similar, yes. We've, we've added a, a couple different things here. We um, we had two different types of cheese in there with Brana Padano and Pecorino Romano. Um, and then, but pretty traditional recipe, yeah, with some breadcrumbs. Uh, we had a little bit of egg in there as well, uh, some chili flakes, some garlic. Um, and then we don't use... Um, uh, beef in this one we use uh, pork and veal okay so let's mix together and mix together all okay. right let me see i want to see right. your magic all right so, all right so yes we have some japanese breadcrumbs called panko panko right i yes. use panko all the time but i use whole wheat because i'm like the fiber queen those are white ones right <laughs> yes correct. and then uh, hey, some if you don't have panko chef if you didn't have panko could you just use regular breadcrumbs yeah absolutely that's totally fine or even fresh bread if you have white bread or whatever kind of stale bread, you can just rip it up and soak it in the milk as well. That'll okay. work just fine. Great. So, How milk? much milk? Milk there. Any kind of milk? milk? Pardon me? Any kind of milk? I'm using whole milk. Okay. Right on. So we're just going to let it soak. Let the breadcrumbs soak up all the mixture like that. Okay. That's a great tip. 
Yeah, it just gives the it gives the uh, the moisture into the breadcrumbs, and then uh, it allows them to be really nice and moist when you uh, when you cook the meatballs, so they don't dry out. They stay nice and nice and soft. That's a fabulous tip. Okay, if that's the only thing I learned today, I'm happy. <laughs> uh, another really cool trick for uh, garlic: instead of chopping it, you use a microplane and grate it into your uh, into your mix. You know what, I've done that, but I've also grated most of my hand into it. So uh, I like that you're wearing gloves anyway, but I've done it with like a little fork or something. I guess you're just more talented than I am. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many cloves of garlic? That's two. Okay. And how many meatballs is this going to make? This is going to make uh, probably about uh, 12. Okay. Serves two. I'm Serves kidding. Four people. Okay, um, so we have the ground veal. How much? About a pound? About a pound of each, yep. Yeah. Veal okay. and pork. Okay. And pork. And then we have uh, some grated pecorino romano. Pecorino romano. How do you like my Italian accent? That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> you know, I was born and raised in Vancouver. I went to Vancouver Tech. And that was, uh, all my friends were either Italian or Asian. So, uh, yeah, there you go. But those are my two favorite cuisines. So go figure. <laughs> um, some grana padano. Yep. Okay. Uh, um, and then we have about a teaspoon of chili flakes. Oh, I love that. Some zip. Okay. One whole egg. Great. How much cheese did you put in there? About. Uh, just about it was about a half, uh, half a cup of each. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You've got one little container left. What's in that one? So this is salt and pepper. Oh, okay. okay. So You're not putting all that in, are you? <laughs> and then probably about a tablespoon of salt. Okay. Okay. And then we just got to mix it all together. I love playing with food. There you go. It's very, uh, it's therapeutic, isn't it? Don't you think? I think that's why people make bread. Yeah, I just started making sourdough bread at home. It's been going okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> How's your starter? How's your mother? <laughs> yeah. How, how's your mother? <laughs> ah. <laughs> I haven't done that yet. I I've been I've been doing yeast bread. I've got I had a whole bunch of yeasts in my house. I went into my pantry and I was like, when did I even buy this? But it's still good. I, I did a test on it. So. Okay. So when those are all smushed up, you make them into individual meatballs, and then are you frying them or roasting them? Uh, we sorry. So what we do is we take them and we roast them. So we'll make them about this size. Nice, nice size meatball. Is that about a quarter cup, maybe? Uh, probably a little bit less than that. Okay, great. Yeah. So about that size. Uh huh. And then we're gonna uh, then we roast them in the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes. Yes. So cooked all the way through. I think the best way to do it is just to check one as well, unless you have a meat thermometer. Yep. Um, and obviously with ground meat, you want to make sure that they're well done. Yeah. Um, so we're looking for about 70, 74 degrees Celsius for internal temperature. Good. That's pretty much what we'll do is we'll cook them like that. Okay. Yep. Um, and then I have some that I've already done up so we can get those ones ready to go. Yes. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I have no, I'm, I'm, I've always been really impatient, but it's like, when I'm the one that's cooking, it's like, I, yeah, but you know, I can see why the host goes, I want to see, I want to eat this right yeah. now. Yeah. And I will do the I'll do the reveal music. Dun da 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 No, that's your glove. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Almost <laughs> I have some of those blue babies too. I use them on uh for, for doing uh meat on television. There we go. Okay, you've got now your tomato sauce. Anything special, just a regular tomato sauce? Um well we do uh so we make a uh, sofrito. Uh so sofrito is uh, Italian mirepoix, essentially. Um, so onion, garlic, uh, chili. Cook that down until it's caramelized all the way through. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, red wine uh, to deglaze. A little bit of tomato paste. And then tomatoes and cook it down for about an hour so you get all the nice richness out. I don't, I don't know. A lot of people like to add sugar to their tomato sauce, too, because I think they're just impatient to let the tomatoes cook down long enough and develop their sweetness. So... Yeah. Personally, don't like to add any sugar to my tomato sauce at all. I don't um, either. Patience, patience, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, we just have a okay. couple. So yeah, so the tomato sauce. So like I said, we roast the roast the meatballs in uh, the oven until they're fully cooked, 
and then we braise them uh, and keep them warm in tomato sauce for uh, like if you were doing a service. So uh, what I would suggest at home is if you're once you cook the meatballs, put them into your tomato sauce and let them cook in the tomato sauce for another little bit, just slowly at a medium temperature, medium low heat, so they absorb extra flavor from the tomato sauce. Yes. All right. Peace. And yes, here comes me. Here comes my my reveal music. Da 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 da. da, da. Oh, so gorgeous. Oh, you're killing me. Can you get these with takeout from you? Yeah, we definitely do takeout. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't deliver it to Toronto, so I'm going to be waiting a long time. <laughs> All right. And then you, what, what are you doing on top? Cheese? This is uh, Grana Padano cheese. Yeah. Oh. And then we have some nice olive oil here. Yeah. For the top. Oh, Okay. You know what? It's comfort food, but that is so sexy. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, come on. You're killing me. That's fabulous. Thank you, <laughs> Chef. <laughs> Thanks so much. My pleasure. Oh, that was really fun. I'm dying. That's awesome. Now I want meatballs. I, I, I feel like Marilyn maybe has a crush on Alessandro. I'm not sure. Oh, me. <laughs> I thought that was the case when she was talking about how he's posting like sexy videos on his yes. Instagram. <laughs> yeah, Mar Marilyn is dropping not so subtle hints today. I like it. But what does her husband think? Where's hold up in the house with my husband way too long. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> it's bound to happen. We're all just going stir crazy, climbing these walls. I, I, I know I am. All right, I feel like today's show is went by really fast. Uh, we're not done yet. We do have uh, one more guest. Well, two guests, but they are a musical duo. Uh, their name is Quinn Kennedy. They are so talented. I don't know if you've heard their music before, but uh, they grew up in BC, Powell River, but now they live in Nashville. And they, again, they make some amazing music. And they also, they love food. We actually have them on Eat North, I would say at least a couple times a year to sharing some recipes or cooking tips. Uh, they most recently did a feature for us about Galentine's Day. Do you know what Galentine's Day is? The day before Valentine's? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's for, it's for women only. Maybe they're gay best friends. I'm not sure. I'm just, but... Um, <laughs> So hopefully myself included. But anyway, it's... Uh... No, no, no. You know what? Men disappoint so often on Valentine's Day. I think women just went, you know what? I want what I want. So, yes. hello. <laughs> yes. So that was the last great feature they did for us. Again, you can find it on eatnorth.com. But I'm going to bring them on to say hello. And I th forgive me if we have a little bit of camera issues here. But we will get them on. There's me. And I'm not sure... I might have them just maybe ring us right back here. So maybe we're going to go back to our group chat just for a second here. And sorry about that. This is a bound to happen with uh, with live. So let me see if we can add them back in here. Uh, oh. Hmm. I mean, like, it's a bit of an issue, actually, but I have a solution. So take, take me out, and then I'll watch and let them take my place. Yes, here, let's just do <laughs> this. Sorry, everybody. It's just going to take one second here. I pick them. Yeah, well, yeah, we, de we definitely want them on, of course. <laughs> yes, there we go. Oh, now our names are swapped up here. Uh, oh, my God. Sorry, everybody. This is the magic of... Uh, live tv here yeah yeah so there we, there we go so they're just going to try to call us in one more time and then we will hopefully get them on um if not i think what i'm going to do is just have them i'll just do a screen share so that way we can see them on skype and then mm -hmm. everyone can enjoy their music that way so i think they're going to come on one sure. more time here and then we'll go from there but anything else you want you want to add before while we're trying to figure out this Technical glitch. Oh, for me. Yeah, I, I'm just dying to hear them sing. I'm so I'm such a big fan of uh, of country music. My I have a cousin Dallas Smith who's uh, kind of a big deal, and we're all real proud of him in our family. And so uh, been a fan, and uh, I'm just dying to hear them sing. So yes, okay, let's let's try another time here. I'm sorry, ladies. This is going to give me one second here. All right, let's see full video feed. Again. I'm sorry, okay. guys. Got Maybe, got it. Got it I'm going to tell you what. So why, why don't why don't you two just chat for one second here while I figure okay. this out, okay? Carmen, I'm hammered. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't 
wasn't joking when I said I'm working from home. This is kind of like my lunchtime activity. So no drinking here until the end of the day for sure. Yeah. But, and I'll catch up to you. Yeah. Catch you up know, to it's you. really bad. I never should have brought this back out. But anyway. <laughs> Um, but you know what? I've been drinking a lot. Of, well, I shouldn't say a lot of, but I've, um, we have happy hour every every day. And uh, I, I realized that, you know, if I continue to do this at the end of, you know, three months, I'm going to have a problem. So I've been switching it up. So sometimes I have a cup of tea in the afternoon. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to going into my pantry and getting that bottle of pink because I literally have one bottle of pink down there. And I know it's it's, you know, it's going to go. So uh so thank you to, uh, to 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 her to Britt yeah for giving me the the go ahead to drink it tonight thank you. <laughs> what are you making tonight for dinner, Marilyn? Well, it's not going to match. You know, I'm I made a lasagna uh, a couple of weeks ago and I froze it, and so I was going to reheat that and make a salad. Um, but the pink wine isn't going to go with it, so I'm almost thinking that I should do something else. What do you what do you think I should make that goes with pink? I usually mm. do. Cheese. I don't have any. You have cheese. Because I think pasta be too heavy unless I make a light one, but I usually do like big ballsy pasta. And like after that meatball thing, all I do is, I mean, I just literally want to make meatballs. So uh, I don't know, maybe I just drink the wine as is. Yeah, yeah. Or you can have it with cheesies before dinner. I know. I think that's a great idea, but we don't have any cheesies in the house, and and we are really we are really not going anywhere. Tomorrow we're going to pick up our groceries, and then we're going to hunker down for two weeks. So uh, we're going we really are going to try to just well, we haven't gone out anywhere anyway except for grocery shopping. So and there's only been one of us that's gone. Uh, so yeah, we don't have any cheesies. No cheesies. Yeah. And are you keeping up with your family through like video chats? Then are you seeing your family much? Yeah, and it's my son's 30th birthday tomorrow, so what we are going to do is we're going to drive over to his apartment and put a bag down. I've got a bunch of wine to give him, and uh, I made him a present, and I you know, got a bunch of stuff, and we're going to put it down in front of this door of his building and call him yeah. down, and we're going to stay like 15 feet apart, and, and that's when I'm going to see him on his 30th birthday. My baby turned 30, and I don't even get to hug him. Oh, you know what? That's okay. That's our new life. You know what? We got to all suck it up, and you know it's it's our civic duty it, it, to be. We have to serve our country right now, and to serve our country is to not be running around and in you know bumping into people. Like we just really have to do this, and so I'm taking it really seriously, and I am hunkering down. So I will see him from a distance, and I will hug him in July, which I think is probably yeah. when we'll be able to see each other again. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, and I agree with you. I think that we all have a responsibility to physically distance. But again, for me, I think physical distancing is not really impeding on social distancing. <laughs> no, I love that you were talking on, like you said, you're using your phone and having, I, I had wine with my two girlfriends from BC the other day yeah. um, at, you know, seven o'clock at my time, four o'clock their time. So it was, it was great. I mean, it was so much fun. We had a great time. It was a FaceTime that we did with three of us. So uh, yeah, it was yeah. Cool. Dan, do you have them back yet? So we're still having a little, a little bit of trouble. So I just give me one more minute and then we'll have them on here. Okay. One more minute. Okay. okay. You right. know what? This is called tap dancing. Did you know that? Um, <laughs> I think that's why you wanted me. Hey, listen, Marilyn, you can talk forever. Okay. So then when I was three, I decided I wanted to be a, you know, yeah, right. Anyway. Um, hey, so do you live by yourself, Carmen, or do you, is someone living with you? No, or is my partner lives with me, but uh, he also works out of Edmonton. Right now he's working from home. So right. working from home sort of means working from home from Edmonton until we can figure out what that process looks like and and whatnot. He's a mental health therapist, um, and so he does a lot of work with children. That's the focus area, and he works with the Edmonton Public School Board. And I do have to say that, you know, as difficult as everyone really has it, like I feel very fortunate, particularly when I hear stories, you know, from him around um, just this anticipation of even like at risk youth and a lot of times teachers really help them out, right? Teachers see what's happening, they get that physical cue and then that's when the mental health therapists kind of come in and support and do observations. And I think without schools, it'll be much harder, but I think they're trying to be agile and pivot and trying to think about what's happening as well and how they can um, change up some of their, their assessments um, in this virtual world, just like a lot of us are. 
Do you know that I, I was a school teacher? I mean, I've had many different careers, but uh, uh, I was a school teacher and I taught home ec and drama. And, uh, you know, you saw, I saw a lot of kids that were compromised. And I understand that role as I had as a teacher to talk to the counselor to get some kids help. And um, there's a lot of kids right now that because of the programs that are, you know, they're not at school, they're hungry. Um, you know, sure. they were actually getting their, their breakfast at school. So, you know, when, when people say, oh, you know, it's okay, we go out, you know, we don't have to follow the rules. Like, you don't know who you're impacting. It's not just, uh, you know, uh, people who are going to get sick. It's the people that don't get to have access to programs that really keep yeah. them mentally healthy and physically healthy. So it's, yeah. it's, we really have to do it. We all have to do our bit. We just have to. Sure. Um, have uh, you seen any programs in Ontario that are helping? Have you seen any programs in Ontario that help kids? Um, who might get school lunch programs, kind of access lunch programs or meal services right now? I don't, I don't know anything about those now that I haven't taught school. I taught school in Vancouver, actually. So I've never oh, taught okay. school in Ontario. So I taught, I taught in North Vancouver uh, many, many years ago. And then came, when I came to Toronto, it was just to be an actress. So I haven't been yeah. involved in any of those kinds of programs. But uh, okay. yeah. There's one in Calgary called Brown Baggy for Calgary Kids. They're um, one of my favorite charities, and they make lunch. They make lunches. They give them out to schools, and teachers can hand them out because teachers know like which children are probably the ones that need the lunches. Um, to your point, and even I think they were trying to pivot and think about how they can service the um, communities now with schools being, you know, canceled or moving online. And so they've actually just announced. I believe there's a website you could go to. I'll have to look this up and. And post on my Instagram, um, but they've announced a program where I think children or families can go on and anonymously say that they need a lunch and pick them up at different restaurants all around town in Calgary. I know in Calgary there's um, a restaurant called Broken Yoke. They do a lot of brunch service. They're really popular, and they have restaurants up north and south, and they're one of the first restaurants to sign okay. up. Okay. So I hate to be abrupt, great. but I feel like now that's working, we need to, we got to, got to have on here. So I'm bringing, I'm bringing some music. Yeah. We have, we have the lovely twin Kennedy. Can you, can you ladies hear us? We can yes. hear us. Hey. Yes. Oh. Can See, you aren't, hear us? aren't you happy we finally got them on? Aren't they, don't they seem like the loveliest people in the entire world? Worth the wait. Yes, yes. Thank you. So, so how are things, again, like I mentioned before, uh, Twin Kennedy, Julie and Carly, they are based in Nashville. So what are things like in Nashville right now with, with everything that's happening with COVID? Well, it's certainly been a crazy time for all of us. We are mostly just in our homes, homebound and you know, eating some good food like you've all been sharing and playing lots of music. No, and I'm picking up the good tips so that you can help <laughs> yes. us moving forward. But all of our friends are musicians here. So for the first time ever, we're all home at the same time, but we can't hang out. So, oh, that, yeah. but at least we get to hang out together. We're not keeping our distance. <laughs> yeah, you are lucky because I've been watching some of your live streams. They happen fairly regularly on your on your Facebook page, and and you two sound so good in the Facebook lives because again, you're you're lucky to be stuck together because you can play together. I think it's it's amazing. <laughs> so, well, yeah. as you know, being a twin, we've been stuck together since before we were born, so it just feels natural. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I'm I'm a twin too. I don't know if you guys knew that. So surprise! Yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> Our Twitter's two Dan Clapsons yes. out there. <laughs> well, he looks looks very different from me, but there are there are two Clapson twins running around. One, well, we're not running right now. We're stuck in our houses. So, but what can you do? And for you two, you had a new album coming out. You have a current single, um, "Call It Love." Did you have to delay anything with, with that? because of what's happening right now? Oh, yes. yes. I mean, with all of the changes, we've had all of our tour dates pushed and some release plans pushed, but we're making the best of the situation mm -hmm. and, you know, getting more experience with the live streams and with doing things online to keep in touch with everyone until this passes. Right, absolutely. And and one thing that I loved about your tour idea is that your new album is called Homebound and you actually oh. were going to be homebound on the tour they were going to do tour stops to go back to bc and that just not happening that's for them. right isn't the world funny like that yeah we, we couldn't believe when we planned the title homebound we never knew we would end up literally, literally homebound <laughs> so so in some ways the branding is still sort of working for you so that's good yeah that's right yeah we yeah. got lucky yeah absolutely so uh do you two feel like playing your your current single call it love for us Love We'd to love play to. it. Send oh, really? love well, out to all of your listeners. I think we could all use that while we're cooped up at home. 
Absolutely. For sure. This is our latest single. We wrote it with fellow Canadian artist Steve Rivers. Mm -hmm. And it's called Call It Love. So sending some love to all of you there, homebound with us today. What do you say we just let go? Stop saving it up for tomorrow. We both know it's been long enough. Devo. What do you say we give in to us? What do you say we just call it love? Hey. so so good and uh, what, what I love about you aside, aside from your amazing music is that that you love food too so you are an honorary member members of the Eat North family I feel like now oh, thank we you are so we are honored. very proud members of that family thank you <laughs> that's great to hear well that was that was a really fun show today again thank you to Twin Kennedy for finishing it off with a the lovely song that's their current single call it love which you can find on spotify and definitely give them a follow on on all social streams they're really fun to follow marilyn carmen always a pleasure chatting with you and we'll be back next week next week all right goodbye everybody bye